Hey there, it's Erin here at Readwise, and I am back with another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to one of Reader's more advanced functionalities, and probably one of its most powerful functionalities, called the feed. Admittedly, dialing in your feed will take a little bit of Goldilocks style trial and error, but it's well worth it. Once your feed section is up and flowing, you're going to be able to stay on top of all of your favorite email newsletters, artisanal blogs, industry news, and so much more beyond that. Let me show you how. First things first, many users ask us, what's the difference between feed and library? Why have two sections at all? We would much rather keep the product simple than add the complexity of two locations unnecessarily. But early on, in combining a read it later functionality, like what you might find in Instapaper or Pocket, with an RSS feed reader functionality, like Google Reader or Feedly, we discovered it was essential to separate the two. Your library is your high signal, permanent storehouse of digital content containing only things that you've manually chosen to save for yourself. Your feed, on the other hand, is a lower signal to noise destination where your subscriptions such as RSS feeds and email newsletters are automatically pushed to you. I'm now going to show you how to subscribe to RSS feeds and email newsletters and reader. If you're like us, you probably think of RSS as a relic of the web 1.0 era a standard that nearly died when Google abandoned Google Reader and social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit replaced the blogosphere. But as individuals are becoming more intentional with their media diet, RSS has actually begun a little bit of a renaissance. So if you're not already an RSS adopter, I encourage you to give it a shot. There are several ways to subscribe to RSS feeds and Reader. If you already have a collection of RSS feeds from another service, such as Feedly, iNoReader, or Feedbin, you can migrate all those feeds over to Reader in one fell swoop. Simply download the OPML file from your feed service, then drag it on top of your Reader browser window to upload. Another way to subscribe to RSS feeds is from an article directly in Reader. Reader is constantly scanning each and every document you save to your library for the presence of an RSS feed on the domain. If it detects one, it'll show a subscribe button on this right-hand sidebar, which you can use to subscribe. If you've already subscribed to the detected feed, it becomes an unsubscribe button instead. If you're new to RSS, I'd encourage you to head to the Manage Feed section and check out our suggested feeds feature. As I already mentioned, Reader scans each and every document you save to your library for the presence of an RSS feed and then aggregates those feeds here. Reader then uses Light AI and some heuristics to classify these feeds as either high signal or low signal. If you're just beginning a feed workflow and looking for inspiration, I'd highly recommend subscribing to all these high signal feeds in one fell swoop and then using the unsubscribe to prune feeds over time that aren't generating delightful content. When you subscribe to a new RSS feed, Reader will automatically import the five most recent documents into your feed section. To see all the RSS feeds you are subscribed to, you can always click on the Manage Feeds page. From here, you can delete feeds, click into individual feeds, and even group feeds into folders, which I go into in a separate video that I'll link below. Here's a Reader pro tip. We've discovered that there's an asymmetry in subscribing versus unsubscribing to feeds. In other words, we all have a tendency to subscribe to more things than we unsubscribe from. We see this not only in RSS and email newsletters, but all the time on social media, such as Twitter. It's just much easier to follow someone than to unfollow someone. If you discover that your feed experience isn't great, we want to encourage you to unsubscribe from sources that are generating documents that are annoying. Maybe there's one feed that's dumping hundreds of low quality posts per day into your feed, drowning out all the other important stuff, or maybe you accidentally subscribe to a politically charged feed that doesn't resonate. Dialing in a healthy feed experience is like Goldilocks. You want to get it just right. Whereas RSS has been on a secular decline over the past few years, email newsletters have been on a meteoric trajectory with the rise of the creator economy. Email is such a great way for creators to distribute their writing, but it's not always the best experience for you as a reader. So we've created several different ways to get emails into your feed and bring the source into your reading workflow. First, we always recommend that you check if a newsletter has a companion RSS feed. This is the case 80% of the time with platforms such as Substack, Ghost, or WordPress automatically creating an RSS feed. The RSS feed is superior to email for two reasons. First, the content just parses more beautifully. 
Second, you'll just have higher quality metadata, such as the URL of the post. But not all creators offer a companion RSS feed. If this is the case, you can get emails into Reader using your custom Reader email address. To find your custom forwarding address in the web app, simply click on the blue plus icon and then click on send emails to your feed. This will copy the address to your clipboard. To find your custom reader address in the mobile app, click on the settings icon in the tray and then copy from there. Now you can either subscribe directly to newsletter using this address, or if you prefer these emails come first into your primary email client and then are forwarded into Reader from there, you can set up auto forwarding. I'll link instructions for common email clients to do this below in the video description. Now that your feed is up and running and chock full of all this wonderful content, let me show you some of our recommended workflows for getting the most out of it. From your desktop, you can open an article and hit J to advance to the next article or K to jump back. Once you've opened an article, it will be marked as seen. You can also mark a document as seen using the space bar or if you want to mark everything as seen, you can use this button in the bottom left. If you spot an item you want that looks interesting to you and you want to save it for later, hit L to save it into your library's later tab. If there's a feed item you end up reading, highlighting, and finding safe worthy, you can hit E to archive it for future reference. On your mobile phone, we've developed a delightful TikTok UI for doing the same thing. To access this feature, simply jump into the feed and click on the square icon in the upper right. You can swipe up to advance, swipe down to go back, save for later, and of course, tap right in to start reading. If you want to back out of this UI, just swipe from the left edge of your screen. Just as on desktop, advancing marks a document as seen, so this UI is a great way to clear your feed frequently. Thanks to this feature, you can now review hundreds of articles per day without breaking a sweat. Last but not least, if you're looking to build a consistent reading habit that helps you stay on top of your feed and whittle down your existing library backlog, I'd encourage you to try out the Reader Daily Digest. Similar to the Readwise Daily Review, the Reader Daily Digest sends you a notification once a day alerting you of a new roundup containing up to 25 documents from both your feed and your library. The first 20 documents in your Daily Digest are new items drawn from your feed. If there are more than 20 new items in your feed between yesterday and today, Reader uses light AI and heuristics to skim off the 20 best, making sure you don't miss anything important. The objective of this section is to read those things worth reading right now, save those things worth reading for later, and discard those things not worth your attention at all. The second five documents in your daily digest are previously saved items drawn from your library later backlog. The objective of this section is to make it easy to consistently review things that you saved for your future self. This also prevents your library backlog from becoming overloaded. If an item is the right document at the right time, you can read it on the spot or promote it to your inbox or shortlist. If an item no longer sparks joy, you can simply archive it. If you want to keep an item in later to be resurfaced in a future Daily Digest, just swipe up. Daily Digest is a mobile first feature. You can enable it from the settings page inside the Reader mobile app or from your home screen on desktop. All right, so I hope this video helped you get up and running with a joyful feed. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment them below or reach out to me or the Readwise team. In the next video, I'm gonna walk you through one of Reader's other most powerful features called Filtered Views. Filtered Views enable you to further customize your Reader experience, including your home screen, that left-hand sidebar, creating custom groups of content, kind of similar to folders, and most importantly, developing even more powerful workflows in Reader. I'm gonna link that video below and I'll see you over there.